Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. We are joined with Tim Alexander. As I was using a little humor with Tim, the segment, and of course, as they know, I bumped it up a few notches. 2014, you're seeing a new super energized Dr. Bill Deagle. I'm healthier than ever. My nutraceuticals are better balanced with my QRMA, my detox, and my 3D NLS machines. Uh, I am a new refurbished and energized uh, fighter against the powers of darkness. And I guess we're going to spend 20 seconds or 30 seconds on the good news and the rest on news that isn't really bad. It's pretty damn catastrophic. But the fact is that our God is God. We are believers in the Most High God, both Tim and I. And we're standing up as warriors against the powers of darkness. And again, remember, if you're a, uh, a pest controller, all you have to do is shine your light on the cockroaches and the pests, and they scamper and run away. The fact is that the light, the European Parliament's now asking Snowden to show up and do a talk to the to their their Parliament Commission about the snooping by the no such agency, the NSA and the American government, not only on our allies, Germany, etc., but on everybody, everybody on the planet. That's why the data center, this Zeta by data center being set up in Bluffdale, Utah, is an abomination. It's an abom. What we have right now is that we're marching literally blindfolded toward the mark of the beast. Well, That's yeah, and happening. Dr. Bill, uh, 500 years mm -hmm. of uh, of major spying history shows that uh, this is never about protecting us from the bad guys. It's always no. about tyranny. Always. Yeah. Always. Uh, you don't. Have, I mean, they literally have admitted to spying on Congress and to spying on every single American who uses the telephone or internet or the mail or you know anything to communicate, and that is unacceptable. It's unconstitutional. It's against everything America has ever stood for. And we couch potatoes in America better get off our butts and do something fast because we are going down the drain fast. Uh, by right. Wait. That we, since we have 30 seconds to talk about something positive, uh, in the United Kingdom, uh, the House of Lords, and I've, I've said it, uh, but I could vote because I'm a American, not a, a British uh, citizen, but the House of Lords occasionally rises uh, and does something really good. And the reason is these guys are all there for life. Uh, most are life peers. They're, they're created a, a baron or baroness for life. But there's right. still 92 hereditary peers who uh, get to sit for life. And they don't have to kiss the the uh, behind of uh, the government or the these uh, super elite uh, banksters. And the br British government introduced this bill that uh, would allow them to define almost anything as a crime. And uh, even Christmas caroling, literally, literally. And, <laughs> And the the, the 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 House of Peers, the House of Lords, in an overwhelming vote, 128 vote uh, defeat, uh, rejected it. And uh, you know, every once in a while, uh, it, it's nice to see that. And this is the House of Lords, you know, which everybody says, oh, the, you know, these are the old aristocrats, blah blah blah. But occasionally they stand up for the people, yeah, and they it, it, say, it, it, we're it, not putting up with this nonsense. Now, now this is actually pretty humorous. We have a group of people who are quote the power elite that actually have two clues and some decency and they're not completely uncorruptible but they're far less corruptible than the so-called elected politicians yesterday we had Mike Filardi on the program and Mike is trying to run for for congressman in Florida and the uh, Democrat is extremely unliked that's the current candidate first time a congresswoman and the Republican is a millionaire uh, real estate developer that has no clue what the heck he's doing what Mike wants to do as a former IRS agent is actually fix these things like the surveillance society, the IRS grab of Obamacare, etc. The fact is, if we don't get out of our duff and do something this year, this term, this midterm election, we're done. And what I think is amazing is here you talk about something that actually should be almost humorous, where the House of Lords, who you think are the scum of the British upper crust, and in fact, these people are decent, and actually stand up and say, no, we're not going to let this happen. That actually is extreme. That's the, that, to me, is the joke of, of the month of January 2014. The power elite actually stand up and say, we're not going to take this anymore. Uh, who do you think you are, British Parliament, shoving this kind of garbage down our throats? Well, and, uh, it's, it's an absolute 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 observation <laughs> I, I've made before, because you have to remember, they may be, uh, in, in some cases, they may be the old aristocracy and the elite, and they've had money for generations, body, body, body. But at the top, way above them, are this global banking cartel, this, this trash that is right. driving the world into a new 
World Order, into uh, well, uh, World War III, and all this horrible stuff. I mean, look at Fukushima. My God, they're going to kill us. Here in North America, people are already beginning to die uh, no. from Fukushima. And you have made the point. Well, my, my, then, minor error, minor error, not going to. It is in process now. I used to say, prepare, prepare, prepare. If you have a panic button, you're like those ones they do on the Staples commercial, hit it because it's time to panic. And uh, what's really funny is here in America, we have <clears throat> 42% of Americans now are saying they're independent. Now, this should be a lesson for both Democrats and Republicans, and we have people like Keisha Rogers, who's now on our show regularly, and her star is rising. She's black. She wants to get rid of Obama. She's got two clues. She's a patriot. She's a believer. This woman needs to be a, con- needs to be a senator. We have Republicans like Mike Villardi that want to be a congressman in Florida. We have a rising storm of people that are in our military in our agencies, in our government, in the so-called bureaucracy that actually see the fall of America and the destruction of our state at the behest of globalist satanic maniacs, and we're not going to take it anymore. This is the year where we finally put our foot down and say, enough of this. We haven't contained Fukushima. There's a stand down that's now four years out with the Macondo drill site, which is still poisoning the Gulf of Mexico and our food supply there. The Chinese last week literally banned our seafood and our shellfish from the west coast of the United States and Canada because he said and it's too toxic. And our corn is too toxic. The corn is toxic because it's genetically modified. And our seafood because it's got radiation from Fukushima. And our media and our here California public <laughs> health actually said, you know, Bobby McFerrin's song, "Don't worry, be happy." I mean, come on, now. <laughs> come on. I, you know what? You know what I want to do? You know what I want to do? I'd like to actually, as they say, be slap. The so-called doctors and scientists they have the nerve to put this kind of crap out. Give them a B slap. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, you, you know, you, you you can say positive things, I suppose, about uh, all this nuclear radiation. It glows in the dark. I mean, we could save a lot on uh, energy. Well, <clears throat> here's here's what's going to happen, and I, and I I want to kind of run this down and see what you think, because you're the geopolitical military expert. This year. The following is going to happen. This is not a maybe. This is above a prediction and below a prophecy. It's called a warning. Number one, Japan's going to collapse. Their, their, their yen is now half what it was a year ago. The Abe government, no matter what they do in terms of becoming member, being members of the Um Shinrikyo death cult, which they are, which is craziness, uh, the, we're going to have a radiation sickness here in America when these burps of radiation finally make people sick enough. And municipalities like... Uh, uh, Berkeley decide to start doing radiation testing in states like California and Oregon actually test their beaches and find out, just like the Los Angeles Times published a few days ago, I had an argument recently with a person who I know really well who said, oh, that's all garbage, it's all garbage. I said, do you know how to read? Can you read the LA Times? Do you realize they're doing a new catch-up three years? There's other alternative broadcasters trying to catch up to Deagle and Rents and others that have actually been doing this for three years. I have the creds, the credentials, to actually tell you how damn dangerous this is and it is beyond i mean i'm pulling my hair out having panic attacks wondering how come people don't believe me how come they're not getting their radiation protection how come they don't realize the plagues are here including now h5n1 and yet people are there oh uh we we've googled deagle and he's crazy so we Uh in my blog matter. Europe today, I, I, I made the point that Dr. Bill Deagle makes the point that this radiation doesn't just kill by, by cancer, but it weakens us medically, and it makes and us mentally, more mentally, prone to yeah, all it this you, other garbage that they're, they're, it they're shoving turns you into, it turns you into a zombie. If you actually did a uh, spec scan of brain blood flow, if you did a quantitative EEG, if you're not detoxing your body and protecting yourself by drinking clean filtered water and air, etc., <clears throat> eating, not eating radioactive fish in the Pacific, the strontium and cesium as it bioaccumulates is going to lobotomize you, which is not a good thing, and you won't worry about anything anymore, but you will be like the walking dead. No kidding. So, if you don't listen to me, you will die. Back. But it'll bring us to peace. Welcome back. And uh, Tim, you're an expert on the military uh, aspect. You're capable, and I know you're one of the few people I know that's capable of what I call multi-level space chess. You've got a mind that thinks strategically. 
and it's a talent. It goes beyond just you know unidirectional intelligence and regurgitating. And you pull together the news items. You're a professor, and you teach these things in in uh, uh, Indiana. What happens is that one of the stories you have posted up today on EuropeBusiness.blogspot.com is Putin. Iran must be invited to Syria talks. Uh, this is the year, and I'm going to say this as a warning, not a prophecy, but above a prediction that if there isn't a level of conflict bringing us to a peace treaty, we're going to have a thermonuclear scale or biological and chemical war. Period. And that's yeah, going to I happen. agree, 100%. And that's going to happen this year. We're, we're not talking about a nice, happy, Merry Christmas. No, we're talking about if we don't have a peace treaty this year, we're going to have a lot of dead people. At the we, very minimum, we it'll be in a... In September, uh, just barely, because the House of Commons uh, basically put its foot down and said, you know what, we're not going to go to war with Iran. And uh, that woke up enough people in the U.S. Congress but, but, where they didn't vote, but they <clears throat> but the but, message but, got through. What, but remember now, what they're doing is they're creating a state of plausible deniability that when in the rogue state of Israel, last week it came out that the NSA is spying on Israel because they don't trust them, and our military, our Joint Chiefs of Staff are completely freaked out. What scares me most is that when you get reports that are reliable that tells us that our top military are completely freaked out by Netanyahu and Lieberman and the crazy Israelis, then you need to worry. Well, now you, need I, to worry. you know, I, in, there, remember the stories about uh, the, the, the plane of the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff that uh, was almost shot down, had to make an emergency landing in the Middle East uh, right after he had a, uh, a very uh, unfriendly uh, argument with uh, Netanyahu. Uh, I mean, you are, are, are dealing with some really, no, I call him nutty Netanyahu. He's satanically or, energized. Uh, BB look, look at the comments. Six, 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 yeah. what, what do you think about Mr. Gates, our top general, making his comments about Obama and the incompetence well, of the administration? I, I, yeah, he, <clears throat> he, he, he makes some really strong points about Obama. But, you know, this is a man who served both Bush and Obama in a war that was really very much opposed to American interests. It was all about Zionism and yeah, the but, globalism. But, 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 but even evil people, this is my point, yeah, even true. evil people right. have a line in the sand. In other words, if you talk to someone in some war or somebody that's a mass killer, he won't kill his mother or his brother or his child. He might That's kill a thousand people. True, but there, there are some nuts that, that, that would. But yeah, and, and you're right. And, and, and no, everybody's even, got a line. Even evil an example, have a, here, here's have a, line a line of mass murder. Plan. You tell them the mass murder, you say, okay, you don't have to murder anybody today, but I want you to take this chainsaw without an anesthetic and chop your right leg off on orders within the next five minutes. <laughs> so everybody's got a line in the sand. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter how evil they are. Unless you're Satan himself, totally driven by complete and 100% evil, you, and, you know, and the fallen ones. It says in the Bible that the devils and the Satanists and all these people are 100% given over. There is no recompense for them. They're no, 100%, no, 100% no, they, of their they, soul is given over to evil. They're, they're gone. They're beyond the pale of, of recovery. Now, human beings... eternity is a long <laughs> time to spend in hell. Well, actually, uh, although the worm will rise from eternity and there's smoke, the process is called annihilation. So the destruction, you know, it talks about the second death. Jesus talked about it. He talked about it more. The first thing he talked about was money, and the second thing was the second death, which means the physical body dies. He says, fear not those who can just destroy the body, but those who can destroy the soul. We're not talking about, you know, Flip Wilson and, and, and Sammy Davis Jr. having a party in hell with cocktails and music and dancing. We're talking about annihilation alone in the dark, falling into, into, into nothingness, knowing you're separated from your creator forever and ever. That's not funny. No. So the, no. The, and, and I tell people, heaven starts today when you're married to the Most High God. You serve him, you pray, you ask for every action, every thought of your heart and your intent is is in line with God. Well, well I'll tell you, and, Dr. And, and, Bill, and we are in just incredibly bad times. Oh, uh, boy. We, and, and this is the most on dangerous. the edge. Of, yeah, this of, is the uh, this is the as a hairpin turn on the mountain road with a crack addict at the steering wheel, uh, who's blind in one eye and drunk, drunk and on crack <laughs> and stepping on the pedal and suicidal with yeah. the guardrail out and he's coming around a, and there's black ice on the hairpin turn and you're on the outside door. How's that? <laughs> and the lock doesn't work. 
Good yeah, luck. Let's get, let's get to, <laughs> little, little humor here. Let's go on and talk about Janet Yellen. See, is she yelling for more money? Is she going to do more sequels? Oh, I, I, she's, she's one more uh, hard uh, globalist Zionist mm. mouthpiece that uh, is determined to take us to hell. Uh, they are destroying the greatest country that has ever existed uh, in human history. That's the United States of America. And it's purely by design and the uh, we, the American people, People are letting a tiny, and I emphasize the term tiny, we're not talking about 1%, we're talking about 0.0001% of the population. A tiny group of people destroy this country, destroy our freedoms, destroy everything, and our very lives, our very lives. Because believe you me, uh, all this stuff from Fukushima, well, they have tried to cover it up as it's coming across. Millions and millions oh, will I, die I, in North I, I America. I talked to a lady yesterday from Malibu, a very wealthy lady, and she lives by all these big movie stars, and she went down with a radiation detector, and it jumped off the scale in Malibu, just up the road from me, okay? I'm going this weekend with my Inspector Plus in a plastic bag down to Oceanside Pier, which is the longest wooden pier on the planet on any coast, and there's a lot of surfers and other people. Uh, if my detector goes nuts, I'm going to report it. I took my detector last June when I visited my son up to Portland, Oregon, inside the aircraft of a Alaska Airlines jet going from San Diego to Portland, Oregon. And when we got within about uh, maybe a couple hundred miles of, of, of Portland, the detector ran, jumped from two times background to like 35 times background. Ooh. It jumped over 2,000 counts a minute. Wow. Oh my God! And then I would, my eyes are popping. Of course, I'm very expressive anyway. I'm actually, I could probably be a stand-up comedian because my face is, says a thousand words. And my wife looked at me; she almost started laughing because I looked so freaked out. But <laughs> and I pointed her at this, and I was at the same time taking my iPhone and my iPad and taking pictures of my Inspector Plus and pictures of my face while I was freaked out looking at this. <laughs> And I'm thinking, uh, oh my God, really oh my funny, God. though, and you I'm, know, and, 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 and guess what? It's a lot worse right now than it was then. Right, and the thing is, I'm, I'm, I'm mouthing words without saying them, OMG, OMG. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and people think, oh, well, they, the, the usual thing is, we've Googled you, Deagle, we don't want to believe you, you're a nut. I'm thinking, you know what? You're first going to get sick, probably with one of these airborne flus. You're going to find out that to, to get non-toxic, non-radioactive food is going to be damn near impossible this year. You're going to find out the hard way that the economy is going to crash and they're going to devalue the dollar. So if you had pension funds, equity in your home, cash in your sock in your, in your closet, it's not going to be worthless. And I'm telling you, the uh, globalists, you they I don't recommend. want some of it, they want it all. They, they want all the divots in their little electronic computer. And if you just behave, all they need to do is press Alt-Delete. And anything you had, that That's says, right. and you shall not buy yourself, save that you have the mark or the number of the name. Well, get right with God, folks, because uh, this, this is, is going to be the year for hell. This is going to bring about the peace treaty. This will bring about the revealing of the sons of Hades. This will bring about the mark of the beast. This process this year. Chris Harris, that's his radio name, uh, working in feverishly on the Ranger Project, actually reviewing all the safety standards and so on with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission here. Last year, uh, traveling to Korea uh, to ana analyze their situation, in fact, they have virtually identical, stupidly designed reactors in Korea, although they're not in a fault line zone like Japan. And we have a situation which is devolving very quickly. And I'm going to go over some of the technical details of the possible things that can go wrong. Uh, Chris, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, let's start off, uh, fire off some questions, because I know you're so busy, you didn't have time to put something together in writing, but we had a chance to kind of fire questions back and forth, so we're not going to go at slow speed here, we're going to go at fast speed. What are the possible breakdowns that can release massive amounts of radiation? If you're to summarize in bullet points, and then I'm going to fire some questions back at you. What are the three or four things in the next, say, year that can go really wrong that can cause massive radiation release? Unit 4, task drop accident, 
All right, that's yep. uh, and that, that's one of them. The next one would yeah. be loss of uh, structural integrity in the multitudes of uh, tanks that they have set up to house the wastewater. Another which, which one, where they don't, where they don't even have rivets on the lower part of the tank, by the way. They actually, when they built them, they put them together with duct tape and wire, and they didn't put proper <laughs> rivets. They didn't actually follow even the instructions for putting together the tanks, believe it or not, that were supposed to last minimum five years. These are supposed to last 20, and so the tanks aren't even constructed properly because they didn't read the instructions, believe it or not. Okay, continue. Okay. Um, a criticality accident, perhaps at Unit 4 or in the future at Unit 3, um, right, and criticality, by the way, means a nuclear a nuclear event where where neutrons are released that causes a chain reaction. It may or may not cause a small explosion. It's not likely to cause a big nuclear explosion, but it'll throw debris and it'll cause what's called a pyrophoric fire, which converts the vast majority of the radioisotope pellets and waste into a nanoparticle vapor that enters the atmosphere or the oceans. So that's okay. Next one. The radioactive sludge accident where the containment that's housing the sludge from their ALPS system, the Advanced Liquid Processing System, which has been halted in operation because there are questions raised about that particular uh, eventuality, a sludge release. The sludge is made of very highly radioactive waste that has been uh, gleaned out of the cooling system, so it's possible that that could happen. Um, well, what about the removal of fuel rods? You mentioned the first ones were the new rods, which are relatively straight. The ones, the last ones that they talked about a few weeks ago, and I think they're up over 110, I think, fuel rod mm-hmm. assembly bundles out of 1,553 they pulled were relatively straight, but the later ones now are bent. Uh, what's the chances of, of one of three eventualities? Number one, banging these rods together to cause a critical reaction that'll cause a fire. Number two, destroying the seal on the fuel uh, on the on these what's called these cooling pools, so that the seal either degrades from neutron annealing, or just from wear and tear. Or number three, the structural integrity as the building twists, as it starts to fall into the subsidence in the soil, which is happening because their inclinometers are telling me uh, reports that the buildings are starting to sl- to slip, or an earthquake strikes. Any of those things could cause a critical reaction to cause a pyrophoric fire. So I'm saying. We're going to have it happen this year. 2014 is going to be a year when they're going to have to try to evacuate Tokyo. And people that don't evacuate are going to get nosebleeds, nausea, central nervous system problems, seizures, abdominal bloating, immune system dysfunction. And, of course, by the way, if you want to make a super weapon, you expose them to the flu and then irradiate them. <clears throat> they discovered this with cyclotrons and small animals back in, in, in research back in the 60s. And they discovered if you want to make a super weapon, you infect an animal like a ferret or a gerbil uh, with a pathogen and then you irradiate it with a cyclotron radiation uh, d- generating device and that takes that pathogen and makes it from a slightly angry to an insane pathogen so we're likely to see super organisms coming out of japan so anyone that's really dangerous already is going to become a lot more dangerous uh, from the population exposed because of their weakened immune systems and the effect of radiation on them including by the way the american population which at the rate it's going, within five years, it'll be just as radioactive, not just on the West Coast, but in the United States as it is in, in, in Fukushima Prefecture and around that, in OI, etc. It'll be just as radioactive in five years from now in America as it is in Japan today. And that's not a prediction, yeah. that's a fact. That's the rate we're going. Uh, if you want me to continue, uh, we could have. Yes, let's, let's continue that. Let's, yeah, let's continue. Yep, we could have a failure of Unit 4's refueling cavity seal. We've discussed that many times before. That would lead to a drain down of the spent fuel pool because the right. few refueling gates are leaking. Um, that's the same. That, that would be a very similar event as a cask drop accident if they drop a spent fuel cask. Well, um, what about a hydrogen explosion? Uh, we we think that cooling MOX reactor 3 exploded, the vertical cooling pool exploded and threw debris up to 60 kilometers away, including partially intact fuel rods that contained high concentrations of plutonium. 
uh, because it was a hydrogen generated criticality that caused an actual nuclear explosion like a shotgun shooting vertically and then the winds carrying it 60 miles away toward the north part of the Honshu Island. The, uh, the fact is that I think a hydrogen explosion is pretty darn likely. They have zirconium cladding fuel, fuel rod assemblies that basically are out of control. The boronated rubber is gone, so there's nothing to slow the neutrons. And uh, these uh, fuel rod pellets are kind of stuck together and melting. And so there's increasing neutron flux activity and these, I call it the lava lamp effect, of all these coriums, they don't know where it is. They drill down wells to find out how radioactive the water is. Uh, it's it's an astronomical amount, like you know, billions of becquerels per cubic meter of water. It's like oh my gosh. And uh, and we look at specific isotopes. What they've been doing too is they've only they've not been filtering out the really nasty ones that bioaccumulate like strontium and cesium. The water they're releasing into the Pacific Ocean is basically unfiltered. Uh, they're only retaining some water in the, and of course there's a free release of tritium that's being released like crazy because the zirconite cladding is actually generating tritium and hydrogen. So let's talk about that for a minute. Well, if that happens, it would have to happen from the overheating event. And uh, if you have a loss of spent fuel in any of the pools, as a matter of fact, just spent fuel, we only talk about Unit 4, but there's plenty of fuel left in Units 1, 2, and 3. If right. that's happening... And what about the, common, what about the common pool? Are you talking about the, the separate well, reactors? Because the there's also the issue that the common pool is a really big problem, isn't it? No, sure, the common pool is now, <laughs> is now going to receive waste from all the other spent fuel pools, and it's, it's an enormous pool. But now you're putting all your eggs in one basket. What if you have a power failure at, at that particular pool? Now it's not unheard of to have power failures uh, at Fukushima due to uh, makeshift and slap together electrical distribution systems that were subject to the gnawing of big rats or rodentia. Yeah. And so yeah. we've seen that. Yeah, they, actually, they actually found rats. They actually, I remember one of the things is they had a truck <laughs> parked with, with tar a tarp over it. And uh, and the wires, literally the cables running through it, and they actually had <laughs> they had rats chewing through the wires that caused the power blackout and loss of power to the to the pumps to control the water going into these tank systems. So they actually had radioactive rats chewing through the wires and the and the pumps. Well, bon appetit, I guess, but they they will oh, chew through. <laughs> yeah, my gosh. And now yeah. you're not going. By the way, hear this in Japan. You're going to hear it from us because we got lots of sources. Yeah. Uh, and we have ways of finding out what we're not going to tell you. Some of them supernatural of what is going to happen. Now, what I expect to happen, and I'm going to go over some of the biology, which no one else, including Chris Busby or Helen Collicott, is telling you or knows. I'm going to go over that in a minute. But this is a now, now catastrophe. It's not a future thing. It's a now thing. We're going to go over it right now because it's going to get a heck of a lot worse right away. radiation course here. And this, by the way, is for those people who call themselves experts, including Helen Caldicott and Chris Busby. Uh, they can look at electron microscopy and show the damage due to a cell membrane caused by electrons uh, being stripped and free radical damage to the lipid membranes. But here's the plasma physics. All radioisotopes, whether it's cosmic rays, zeta particles, gamma rays, uh, high-speed electrons called beta particle emissions, all strip electrons from tissue. They cause damage to ion channels. Your ion channels basically are how your body pumps uh, sodium out of cells and potassium in, calcium out of cells because calcium is kept out. If you damage your ion channels, for example, in your heart, you get heart failure. If you damage ion channels in your brain, you get seizures because calcium rushes in. It activates calmodulin, uh, phospholipase uh, A and B, etc., and causes seizure activity in the brain. It also unstrips the histone proteins on DNA. So ordinarily your DNA works where most of the DNA is covered with histone protein, protein complexes that cover most of your DNA. It's only certain portions that are actually released for transcription to create the specific proteins and enzymes for the cellular structure of that particular cell, whether it's a neuron, a bone marrow cell, a muscle cell, etc. When you lose that normal uh, electropotential difference, when you lose that normal uh, ability to have transmembrane scalar 
transmission of signals, of biophotonic signals, you can't regulate your DNA. You start to strip the proteins off the DNA, so you end up with activation of cancer genes. You end up with the redox potential dropping, so the tissues have less electrons, and you create a potential difference between that cell or tissue and the surrounding tissue, so you create a, what's called a harmonic uh, frequency-dependent capacitor. That means it picks up a charge and releases it at a specific frequency or spectra of frequencies. And there's a quantum physics equation that describes this. I presented this 32 years ago with, and built 12 machines called morphogenic field machines called a Dynatens with a government grant. Okay, so I know more about this than probably anybody you're going to hear anywhere except in Tier 1 science and some classified project, which is never going to talk because they're going to talk and they'll probably be dead within minutes if they talk. Uh, they never got a chip in me and they never got me into Tier 1 science, although they tried to recruit me numerous times. What you need to understand out there is we are not going to in the future be poisoned. We've been poisoned for three years. And the level of radiation of shorter acting isotopes like radioiodine will continue. Uh, but it's also due to what's called mitochondrial rescue. So don't think that neutriodine, which is just going to stop radioiodine 131, you need it to rescue and make new mitochondria because without diatomic Tesla activated iodine and without selenium to support glutathione peroxidase, Without removal of heavy metals with probiotics and killer max and liquid zeolite, which are non acid biased zeolite, and without the things to rescue and make new mitochondria, uh, you're not going to be able to do so. And that means no mitochondria drops in energetics. You build up toxins and heavy metals and xenotoxins and xenohormones. You also end up with a drop in the redox potential, so you get stealth pathogens that switch on and off genes and cause cancer, and you get the growth of stealth pathogens that can cause the cells to manipulate and produce protein antigens that cause autoimmune disease. So you're going to see a massive increase in dementia, prematurity, trisomy, such as Down syndrome, trisomy 13 and 18, which aren't survivable except for the child of one of the politicians who ran for president, I think, in 2008, who didn't quite make it. Uh, he actually, I'm trying to remember his name, was a Republican. His daughter actually survived a trisomy, which is usually dead in the first three to four months, but the child survived several years, which is really unusual. So... I'm, what I'm telling you is the biology of radiation, what it does to the body. Now, if you take high-dose power C, if you take neutrotrella, neutriodine, if you rescue and remove the heavy isotopes with probiotics, if you drain uh, pure water system water, if you have a HEPA filter, if you selectively don't eat meat uh, from high radiation zones like the North Pacific Ocean and Alaska, if you don't eat filter feeders such as uh, oysters and scallops and so on on the west coast of, uh, of Canada and the United States, if you do the right things, you're going to be fine for now. Uh, the problem is that the people in Japan are approaching, rapidly approaching that, what I call the elbow curve, where I've seen videos already of people that have acute radiation sickness. And uh, this is where we get into the next stage. This is the year when acute radiation sickness becomes very evident to people that living in the Tokyo and the Fukushima and the OI and the adjacent areas. It's also going to become evident that the oceans are dying and that the dead zone, which now means 150 miles off the coast of California, 98% of the seafloor is covered by dead sea life. And what's happened is, I had not only this lady yesterday, but many others, including listening to the RENS network, are going with the radiation detectors, including me. I'm taking mine down to Oceanside Pier this coming weekend, and I'm going to measure radiation levels. And if they're high, I'm going to report them on my program, on my live stream TV channel, etc. Um, what I suspect will happen this year uh, is and here, here's what we need to do. We need to put Kevlar spider silk tents over every one of these facilities. We need a proper reprocessing plant with technology that works. This one has been put on hold. What did you call it, Chris? That it reprocesses that was the, the sludge system, the, the advanced liquid processing system. That's the one and that the, we want. We want it to work because it has a strontium catcher element. Not to, so right now the strontium is just allowed to. You know. It goes right into the ocean. I mean, they're not stopping. And when they say they're putting 300 tons, and even my son quoted that because it's leaking the information out to the mainstream media, it's probably 1,000 tons. But to be honest with you, they're shooting in the dark. They have no idea. It's well over 1,000 tons. And that, when you talk about 1,000 tons, that's the tonnage of the water. You don't tell me how many millions of, or billions of becquerels per cubic meter is in that water. So the fact is that the oceans are dying. Uh, the sea life is now in a state of shock. The carbon-oxygen cycle from the largest ocean on Earth, one-third of the entire oceans of the planet, are in the process of dying. The sea life is clustering along the coastal areas, including the sardines. The sardine catch is zero. Zero. The 80% the of, of the salmon run is gone. It's not there at all in Alaska. 
Uh, we are in a, st the, the fact is we have a preening, narcissistic, uh, idiot actor as a president and the globalists behind him don't give a rat's behind for the rest of the population we need to get a real president who knows what the heck they're doing who actually can, can run things like ronald reagan before he ate too many aspartame laced jelly beans we need to have a military that stands up and if necessary does a military coup to take over this government because the government wants to introduce martial law to clamp down on the alternative media because we ask questions and we want answers because we want a republic where it's safe to live here, where the water and food are safe, where we don't do stupid foreign policy supporting Al-Qaeda on one side and then saying we're going to fight him on the other side in Iraq. Uh, so this yeah. year, here's what you're looking at. Number one, if you don't get Nutramed from, Nutra from Nutramedical, I'm not going to say God help you because you already heard what you need to take. And if you go elsewhere, you're buying a pig and a poke, you're going to get sick. Number two, you better get your finances in order and your prayerful life in order because this year is a year when literally I expect a bank holiday in martial law at least for one to two weeks. Now, some things after that martial law will actually be better. Some types of crime, they'll make sure to look publicly better. But all the taxes and all the things will crush the middle class. We've estimated yesterday with our IRS agent, Mike Velarde, that will have a former IRS investigator $20,000 cost to the average family. The average business is going to go under. Uh, Obama is a full force communist. He's here to strip search America to the bone like a Thanksgiving turkey. Uh, these maniacs are absolutely determined to make America a post colonial empire. Uh, and they're determined to also subjugate it to, a, to treaties that will actually make our Congress and Senate vestigial, which means they don't mean anything. It means the office of the president is a proxy office for globalist bankers and the Congress and Senate and even our court system are just big rubber stamps. Um, I expect this year to see a devaluation of the currency dramatically. I expect to see that radiation will affect food enough that people will be getting physically sick and finally either getting paranoid about it or getting physically sick to the point where it affects fertility. In Japan, if you are trying to have a baby, you need to have your head examined. Uh, because, to be honest with you, in northern Japan, if you have a child, the chances of genetic defects or radiation injury are extremely high. You need to get away from there. Uh, you need to start taking nutraceuticals if you're working in these areas or in America right now. And if you don't take these radiation things and get your water de detoxified, I'm in the process of putting a well in because I don't trust even our roof water collection system because the water security is not here. We are in a drought that's worse because they're blocking the weather systems. So the normal storm systems that bring water to the Sierra Mountains here in California, uh, to the uh, Lake Henshaw system, which supplies Southern California and to the uh, aqueducts are gone. They're not here. Uh, we're in a massive drought. We're in weather warfare because part of it is actually to stop the radiation from making us so damn sick right now they can't accomplish the new world order because they want to get the chip in us. They want a national biometric ID. They want to have treaties that finally just take away the last, last fragments of the Constitution. Your comments, Chris. Uh, I, I just want to say I, I've got to thank all my all sources who give me information that's even on non-professionals, such as a, a chat room on the Wake Up Project, uh, on Pal Talk, and the Simply Info. Those, those people are, are also part of the alternative media, and I really appreciate them also what, supplying. What was that website again? Uh, Chris, what was that uh, website uh, again? Simplyinfo.org. It's the Fukushima Leaks Project. They have a chat room, too. Those guys are always, uh, I don't go into them much, but they also uh, send me information. The same thing with yeah, the Wake Up Project on PalTalk. Yeah. And, you did an uh, amazing job today, by the way. Ask better questions. If you listen to this program, we're going to go deeper, farther, give you more solid facts than anybody out there. There's a lot of people with a lot to say and no reason to be able to say it.